Welcome Scrum Masters to section seven of this course. The lecture for today is working with managers. This is one of two main lectures in this section. There's also a lot of supplementary material, lots of links to pages on the web, which talk about communicating to managers about Scrum. Previously, we've talked about the mindset and heart set of a Scrum Master, the daily, weekly, and monthly rhythms of a Scrum Master, how you facilitate all of the key meetings and peaceful communication. I want to stress that all of these things build upon each other. When you're talking to managers, having your mindset and heart set straight is very helpful and understanding their mindset and heart set is also valuable. Knowing what your daily, weekly, and monthly rhythms are will help you in communicating with managers. Having contributed to your team by facilitating the meetings will be helpful. And finally, of course, peaceful communication. The notion that the goal is to understand and to be understood as opposed to operating from a place of right and wrong will help you enormously when you communicate with managers. So here's the nitty gritty of what we're going to talk about today. We'll begin with some key ideas. Then we're going to go through two papers, one by Denning and one from the Wall Street Journal, which talk about Agile. And these are all aimed at C-level executives. Denning's article is in Forbes magazine. So we're going to learn the language of managers. We're going to talk about the late majority, the adoption curve for innovation, and what it means to be in the late majority. Right now, anyone who's adopting Scrum is in the late majority. Then we'll talk about two techniques to communicate with managers. One is called the push-pull diagram, and the second is the manager presentation. After this lecture, you'll know a lot about how to communicate effectively with managers. Let's begin with the key ideas. Number one is to be completely open. So apply the Scrum values and principles to your communication with managers. Don't try to manage their expectations. Don't try to change their point of view. Don't try to hide things from them. Be completely open and transparent. Have a visible task board that indicates how you're implementing Scrum. Have a visible backlog that talks about how you're improving Scrum and what you're doing next. Implement, plan, do, check, adjust. With the check step, being with the managers. Check with them about what it is that you're doing. If you think that a manager values something, ask them, do you value this? Create metrics which show your progress. Use your observations, emotions, and expectations journals, and more generally, everything that we have learned in this course. What is your manager's mindset? What is your manager's daily, weekly rhythms? Do you know whether or not your manager knows what it is that you're doing? And then a quick tip. With permission, record conversations. I found that conversations with managers are very information rich, and sometimes I can't keep track of everything that they say. So recording the conversation is super helpful. So let's talk about Denning and an article that he wrote called Scrum is a Major Management Discovery. That was written back in 2011 in Forbes magazine. There's a link to the article in the supplementary material. We're going to step through some of the key things that he says because he's communicating to readers of Forbes magazine. That is to say, he's communicating to managers. So let's see how he communicates with those managers about Scrum and what we can learn from it. Let's start off. He says, it is rarely mentioned in general management textbooks or discussed in business schools. Know that Agile and Scrum is new for most managers. He says that the key question is, how do you combine rapid innovation with disciplined execution? And he says that Scrum is an answer to that question. So that's the sort of thing that managers think about rapid innovation and disciplined execution. He says they drew on the inspiration of the classic 1986 Harvard Business Review article, The New New Product Development Game. The fact that this is in the Harvard Business Review will matter to managers. And there's a link in the supplementary material to this article so that you can read it and hand it to your manager. He goes on to say, since then Sutherland, Schraber, and their colleagues have gone on to generate thousands of high performance teams in hundreds of companies all around the world under the labels of Scrum and Agile. Managers are going to care about previous success and testimonials. So the fact that there are already thousands of high performance teams that have become high performance because of Scrum and Agile will matter to them. 
Finally, he says, these software developers had discovered a solution to the problem of combining disciplined execution of high-level intellectual work with continuous innovation. So that goes back to the third bullet point. Rapid innovation, disciplined execution, Scrum is the solution for that. Denning describes Scrum like this. So I think these 10 points are fascinating because he's communicating with managers. So here's how Denning in Forbes magazine describes Scrum to managers. Number one, organize work in short cycles. Two, the management doesn't interrupt the team during a work cycle. Three, the team reports to the client, not the manager. Four, the team estimates how much time work will take. Five, the team decides how much work it can do in an iteration. Six, the team decides how to do the work in the iteration. Seven, the team measures its own performance. Eight, define work goals before each cycle starts. Nine, define work goals through user stories. And 10, systematically remove impediments. So this is how he describes Scrum to a manager. And then he goes on to say, none of these practices is by itself new. What is new is doing all of the practices together in a disciplined way of getting all work done. I found that managers love to hear that Agile is about common sense, things that they already know about. So that's what Denning is saying here. But critically, he says that you need to do all of those things to get all of the benefits. Let's continue. The best teams routinely obtain productivity increases of 200 to 400% changes that are potentially industry disruptive improvements. So the changes here are not small, 10 or 20%, but radical changes that crush the competition. But now he says, more than 70% of Scrum implementations have failed to achieve their goals. When only some of the practices are implemented, such as doing the work in short cycles, but interrupting the team during the cycle, the potential gains in productivity don't occur. So he communicates to the manager that you need to do all of these things to get that 200 to 400%. You can't pick and choose. And finally, he talks about Salesforce. Unlike many firms that have tried to implement Scrum, the leadership at salesforce.com saw that Scrum involved not just the adoption of a new business process or a framework for managing software development, but rather as a fundamental transformation of the way work was managed in the company. That's what we've been talking about since the very beginning of this course, the mindset change that Agile requires. So let's go on now to the Wall Street Journal in an article called CIO's Hardwire to the Business that was published in 2013. The Wall Street Journal brought together about 60 CIOs from major companies and asked them, what are your top priorities? And the fifth priority was Agile software development. And he goes, says, the fifth priority was the need for organizations to embrace agile software development. So it's critical for your managers to know that at the C-level of Fortune 500 companies, the largest companies in the world, agile software development is being embraced. He quotes the Caterpillar CIO, if organizations are not doing it, they need to be thinking hard about it. So managers that are not aware of Scrum, not aware of agile, need to start focusing on it. And finally, he says, Agile software development, which emphasizes the transparency of IT to CEOs and other business leaders, could help CIOs establish themselves as business leaders with a strategic role to play. So this talks about the benefit of doing Agile software development to the manager. It's going to make them into strategic partners. Let's talk a little bit about the adoption life cycle of innovation. It starts off with innovators and ends with laggards. Today, over 50% of all software development organizations are doing some form of Agile. That means that we're in the late majority. So what is it that the late majority is looking for? And this is important because if your managers are still not 100% on Agile, that means that they're part of the late majority. What do those folks care about? So now we have to ask, what data do they want? How risk averse are they? Can it be made inexpensive? Is it easy? Is there systematic success? Because that's what the late majority wants. When it comes to data, they want case studies, testimonials, performance metrics, surveys, studies. Why do they want all of those things? They're risk averse. They're not the innovators. They're not the early adopters. They want something that's cheap. 
They don't want you to say it's going to take six years and six million dollars. They want something that's fast and easy and can be made systematic. That's what the late majority typically wants. So ask yourself, is your manager, the person that you're speaking with, a late majority adopter of Agile? Remember to use peaceful communication. The goal is to be in empathy with managers, and that means understanding them at the level of thoughts, needs, feelings, and requests. The goal is not to convince them. The goal is not to say, you don't understand Agile, you must be clueless. The goal is to understand and to be understood. Remember what I call the simplified prime directive. They are doing the best they can to meet their needs. And that's exactly what you're doing. So blaming or criticizing or holding them in contempt is not the way of peaceful communication. So your goal is to understand and be understood. Your goal is not to convince or change them. Ask questions like, what are the manager's needs? What actions do they take to meet those needs? And how can you work together? So here are some of my opinions. Very few managers are agile. They simply view Agile as a technique to get more of what they want. So ask yourself and ask them what do they want and how will they know whether Agile provides it. And one of the things that you can do to support them is to gather the evidence. Very few managers have ever been on a Scrum team and most people who have gone from non-Agile to a Scrum team call it a life-changing experience. Understand that very few managers have had that experience. And as a result, their intuitions are likely to be way off. So understand where they are and meet them where they are. So here are a couple of techniques that you can use. First, start with PDCA. Always be doing plan, do, check, adjust yourself with your managers. Push-pull diagram. For every manager in your organization that is key to Scrum, do the following. Ask what pulls them away from Agile, and what pushes them towards Agile. So here for Mike, the manager, things that pull them away from Agile are fear, lack of experience, and firefighting. And things that push them towards Agile, everyone is doing it, the boss likes it, and the pilot project went well. So sit down and think through this, and there's a homework assignment around this. And then once you've done it yourself, check with the manager. Another technique is to develop a manager presentation. And one method I like to use has just six slides. Slide number one, you answer the question, where are we now? What is your organization doing now? Slide number two is what problems do we see? Slide number three, what is Scrum? Define it, maybe using just Denning's 10 points. Slide number four, what are the benefits of Scrum? 200% increase in business value is an example. Slide number five, what is the first step to implementing Scrum? in the organization. And slide number six, how will you know things are working? So this is a simple way to present Scrum and what you're doing to managers. And remember, use PDCA. So to summarize, you have stepped through an article by Denning and an article in the Wall Street Journal. You have learned what the late majority wants and how that applies to communicating with your manager. You have learned about the push-pull diagram and how you can use that to analyze the best way to communicate with your managers. And you have stepped through a sample agenda for a manager presentation. Your next step is to view the next major video in this section. Enjoy.